I move that the here. question be now put. We've, we've only had two, two calls so far. I'm uh, interested to hear Grant Robertson. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker, and I promise to be interesting. Um, I too obviously am referring to clauses one and two, and, and I want to pick up um, what my colleague uh, Trevor Mellard was talking about before, because it is a relevant consideration here. We are creating here an act specifically in the name of the Governor-General, and that is something different than, than the situation we've had before in my my previous intervention, I mentioned one of the specific ways in which that is playing itself out, which is that the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet is now no longer going to have the level of responsibility for the office of the Governor-General, and that would, that would perhaps justify in some senses an act in the name of the Governor-General, that it is what we are doing by this act is recognising the, the specific and unique status of the position of Governor-General, and I think that's therefore um, one of the justifications for a bill or an act on its own. But as Mr Mallard said, the proliferation of acts of parliament, which is one of his uh, particular bugbears for those of us in the caucus with him, we, uh, we often have to hear from Trevor about whether there always needs to be uh, legislation. And this is an issue where you know, it's a line ball call in many ways. I think I agree with Phil Twyford that the title of this bill could easily be the, the modernisation of the Governor-General's role, because that really is, is what it's doing. It's also um, in, a, introducing an element of fairness, I think, and so it could be the, the Governor-General's taxation fairness bill, because I think that's the, the element of this bill that will get the most attention from people when they're reporting on this, and no doubt when it takes up many column inches in tomorrow's newspaper, there will be um, a, a focus on the fact that this bill will make the next Governor-General pay uh, income tax. And that's also worthy of mention, perhaps, in the title, Mr Chair, is to actually say um, the next Governor-General bill, because uh, one of the things that I think was missed in the early part of this debate was actually that this bill does not imply to the uh, incumbent Governor-General. Um, his terms and conditions uh, remain unaffected by this particular piece of legislation. So we very, we very much could easily have called this the next uh, Governor-General bill, but, uh, but they ha we haven't done that. The, the government's focused on a more, a more generic title to give it, I guess, an enduring uh, sense by calling it the Governor-General bill. But I do think that... It, it is elegant. Um, it's, it's almost... It's, it's, Elegant in its simplicity, Mr Tremaine. I mean, I think that's it's elegant in its simplicity. But I'm, good, I'm really pleased that the opposition is now taking a, a, a role in this debate because really, Mr Chair, it signals the fact that this should... Sorry, the government. Yes, the government's taking a, a, a role in this debate because it signals that the government is very, very interested in being part of the title debate, Mr Chair. The, the Government is now interjecting, Mr Chair, showing that this is an issue that needs further debate. Because quite clearly, over on the Government benches, there's now concern about whether this should be called the Government. What would Mr Tremaine... Has Mr Tremaine got an alternative title? Are you quite, quite happy with the Governor-General Bill? Well, I think that's a moot point over here because we on this side of the House don't feel it catches the vigorous debate that we've had in the House tonight. You know, Jackie Jean, who served on the Select Committee, I know, is itching to take a call, stand up and say what she thinks the title of this bill should be because she knows that this bill's so much more than the simple title that Mr Tremaine is, is giving it. This is a bill that, 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 is, that is doing a fundamental set of changes to how we view the Governor-General, how the Governor-General is paid, the future annuities for people, for people who come after the Governor-General. And I think you know, we, we've had an interesting debate um, with Mr Mallard's views around quite why we've got such a broad dis, um, definition of, of who the Governor-General's partner may be, but I think, as in my earlier speech I said, this is actually reflective of modern life, that there may well be um, more than one partner of a Governor-General, and that could easily be reflected in the title that we've got in front of us today. But as Mr Twyford said, really the Governor-General Bill, while it represents a modernisation of this position and a modernisation of the conditions that sit around this position, it's actually missing the main point of the debate in New Zealand at the moment. And that's a debate about the constitutional position of Governor-General and Head of State in New Zealand. And I do think this has been a useful and interesting debate on this bill, but actually there's a big picture debate in New Zealand that many New Zealanders want to have about our future constitutional arrangements. And it would be good to see from the government some leadership 
on this issue, but we have not seen that. It's been pushed off for another day. And on this side of the House, we certainly think a conversation needs to begin. It may be that we do, do need to work through some difficult issues, the place of the treaty, what will it mean if we moved on from, the, if moved on from a situation of having a Governor-General who is representative of, of the Queen and of the Head of State in another country? But we would like on this side of the House to see that, uh, a debate like that, a bill that could be called many things other than the Governor-General Bill. Rajin Prasad. Thank you, Mr Chair. I'm uh, pleased to take a call on clauses one and two of this bill. And in talking about the title, I'm reminded by a piece of advice that the Law Commission gave to the Social Services Select Committee quite recently when we would, uh, when we were